Hi to all my beautiful friends out there. I'm Ketty from the Somatic Movement Studio. It's a real pleasure to be here with you and to be able to share a series of 10 short free videos on somatics with you. So let's begin with what is somatics? Well, soma means of the living body. So it's very much about practices that engage your sensations within the body and create a deeper and more meaningful movement experience. Sometimes somatics can be called mindful movement because it really is about focusing your attention in the body. So there are many somatic arts and I'm just going to be showing you one particular way of working with somatic movement. Martial arts, yoga, dance forms, uh, Tai Chi, Qi Kung, there are many art forms that really work a lot with the basics of somatics. And the basics are weight sensing, which is all about feeling your weight, feeling your gravity, feeling where you push the dynamic of your energy. And the other is space, how you use space around you and how you relate to space, whether you're working in a very direct way or in a way that's more fluid and flexible. We also work with elements of time. So sometimes we work with a rapid time or a very sustained motion. Now all of these sensations in the body can be looked at as ways of connecting more deeply with your movement. I'm going to, in these 10 lessons, show you a little bit more about how Bartania fundamentals inform movement. And Bonnie Bainbridge Cohen also uses a lot of this in her BMC and my mentor Martha Reddy as well in Moving for Life. So be sure to check all of those out because I will be posting links. So firstly, let me take you through the six levels of total body connectivity. Level one is breath. Breath is the initiating force. So you know when people want to start a project or start something new, normally they'll stand back and review it and kind of take a breath to initiate it. So with breath, we have our vertical breath, our horizontal breath, and the back and front breath, which is sagittal. We're going to be looking at these in detail further down the track. In this session, I just explain everything. The second level of body connectivity is boundaries, which is core distal. This is core self, and distal is out there space, environment, or other. So when we do movements that deal with bringing energy back into your core, we're really becoming aware of our own boundary. When you touch your skin, when you hug yourself, or when you work with energy pulling inward, you are working with core. When your leg is next to you, when your arms are in, we are very much about core. However, when our energy is open and out, when our leg comes out, when our arms come out, or when we stretch into space, we're working with distal energy in the body. Distal energy will allow you to identify what's outside of you whilst core works with what's inside of you. And I guess you'll see this in some of the fighting arts where you really have to create boundaries and also in the dance arts where you need to sometimes have a sense of spaciousness and sometimes a sense of coming back in. Again, core distal is all about boundaries, personal boundaries. So you see where we're going with this because by using more of the core distal moves or pushing moves, we can then look at how we can get into our own personal space and how our energy works with the external. And also we look at the way we can move through space. We can work out whether our energy wants to be strong and direct with our boundaries or whether we want to be fluid and more all-encompassing with that space between self and other or the environment. So as you can imagine, for people who want to strengthen their boundaries, movements such as, I guess, fighting moves or some of the yoga poses where you're stretching into space, possibly even some of the weight movements that you do where you're pulling a weight from up out there into the body would all be good for your sense of boundary as well as dance where you need to come out and explore space and then you need to come back in to the body so again the second is core distal or boundaries 
The third level of total body connectivity is a beautiful one. It's spinal. Now, our spine gives us a sense of aliveness. Bonnie Bainbridge Cohen calls this the head-tail movement, and some people call it spinal movement. It's basically when you're able to use your head one way and your hips or tail the other way. And you're going to find this in belly dancing. That's why I love belly dancing so much for women, but also for men. If anyone goes to Egypt, you'll see all the guys can dance really well. And what that does is gives you a sense of spinal aliveness and curiosity. You also find this in the Latin dances, you know, with that nice spinal kind of movement, and in the Polynesian or hula dances, and also some of the African style dances. So uh, if you're working head tail, you're curious. What is this message giving to your nervous system? It's telling you that I can move and I can observe what's around me, not only with my head, but also with the creativity center through the lower spine here. So if you're able to move head tail and really work yourself into the head tail experience, you're going to end up with a fluid spine. And a lot of practices that are very strong and linear can be missing that vital spinal connection and vice versa. A lot of uh, exercises or types of movement that are very spinal can be missing the direct connection. We need both. They're kind of almost like a yin yang or masculine feminine force. So again, what is spinal aliveness? It's curiosity. It's being able to see things around you and give yourself choices. And if you know anything about somatics and particularly a branch called somatic experiencing, choice is what heals your nervous system. The ability to change pathways and give yourself a little choice. The next level is upper lower. Upper lower is the midline of the body and how you bend down and then come up. This is an upper lower movement, okay, as is this, crouching up down and coming up. And even something like this is an upper lower movement. So you can imagine that if someone's at the gym doing a kind of movement like this, like a okay, you know, basic squat, okay, sitting back into a squat and then up, that's an upper lower. If someone's doing um, like a yoga pose, uh, like a yoga pose where they're coming out into the warrior, well that again is a very much upper lower pose because you're working through this line here. So when you're bending forward, you're normally going to engage the larger muscles in the legs and lower back, and that gives you a sense of action. So upper lower is all about taking action, and taking action by coming up. When you work with upper lower, you're informing your nervous system that you have a strong base, and you're able to spring up and reach up or achieve things. So just on a basic level, you're, you're really feeling in yourself a sense of capability and being able to take action. So by bringing more of those movements into your life, you will be encouraging your nervous system to feel more capable. The fifth level of total body connectivity is body halves. That's when you take a dividing line through the central vertical channel of the body and you really start to become familiar with what one side of the body is doing. You may work like this, one side of the body is working. So whenever you're moving one side of the body, the action on the nervous system is all about decision, clarity. So if you want to bring more clarity into your life, start getting used to really focusing with one side of your body. So that side, anything that's on that side of the central channel, becomes kind of like the supervisor and takes action and is very discriminating in the path of action they're going to take. Now, of course, with body halves, you can take fluid action or you can take direct action. It's up to you. But the main thing is, which half of the body are you using and when? Body halves, clarity in decision making. Now the last level of total body connectivity is the cross-lateral movement. We take the line down the central channel, but this time we cross the line. 
Now, if you do any cross-lateral movement, one as simple as this can actually wire your brain to work better so that the left and right halves have more of a relationship and are able to communicate better to each other. So, of course, in a lot of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's programs, they actually do these cross-lateral movements like this. They're very simple. That's elbow to knee. Just to wire the brain. And, of course, any movements where you're crossing, even movements as simple as this, that's a pose, not even a movement, it kind of hardwires you to understand that you can take your left to your right and your right to your left. The linear to the organic, the feminine to the masculine. By doing that, we start to integrate both halves of our body. So, cross-lateral movement is all about integration. And of course, being a dancer, this is one of the main things that you start to do with cross-lateral movement. You turn. Now, what happens when a child suddenly realises, after learning how to walk, that they can also turn around? All of a sudden, things like not being scared of the dark will happen because they can see what's behind them. They feel fully integrated. So any cross-lateral movement is wonderful for integration. Full integration, self and space. So I hope that's helped you. They're the six levels and in the next few sessions I'm going to be doing exercises with you to go through that. So for this very first session, session one out of ten, I just wanted to explain to you about these six levels and where we're going to take them in the future sessions. Please share these videos with anyone you think might benefit from them. And again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned something today. Somatics, it's always fun.